Good morning. Welcome to Trinity. On behalf of, on behalf of Marilyn and Larry's family, um, we are looking forward to celebrating his life today. And as we were talking about before in the chapel, it's a little bit bittersweet day, isn't it? So we remember Larry and the blessings that he was to many of our family and friends here today. But he's not going to be here anymore on this earth. But the sweet part is we know where Larry is. And that's what we're going to celebrate worship today. And we'll start by singing Just As I Am. We sing.
Amen. In holy baptism, Larry was clothed with the robe of righteousness that covered all his sin. St. Paul says, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. Or if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We pray. O oh God of grace and mercy, we give thanks for your loving kindness shown to Larry and to all your servants who have finished their course in faith. Now rest from their labors. Grant that we also may be faithful unto death and receive the crown of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes from Psalm 23, which was Larry's favorite psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle lesson this morning comes from Romans chapter 8. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for all of us, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies, who is to condemn. Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors for him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, or things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Our Holy Gospel this morning comes from John 3, 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ, living together in trust and hope. We confess our faith together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with beautiful Savior.
But Marilyn, you always were able to calm him and bring him back. Marilyn, you were a caregiver to the very end. But actually, Marilyn, you were a caregiver to the very beginning, and I will explain it. You see, when Larry took his last breath last Thursday morning, early last Thursday morning, it was a new beginning for him, not an end. The beginning of something very different from the broken world we're all still living in. It was the beginning of being in the loving, merciful presence of his Savior, Jesus. And that gives us peace. But back to his life that we shared with him before Thursday morning. It was quite a life, wasn't it? Larry was a lot of things. And a family man was certainly one of them. He was a son. He was a brother. He was a husband, a father, a grandfather. But he was much, much more. If you're to think of some things that would describe Larry, and I had a little help on this one from family, what are some things that might come to your mind? How about opinionated? Armory. Sometimes he could be a smart aleck. But he was also very hard working. But there's more. Larry was a proud American. He was a Air Force pilot. He was also a crazy pilot. The kids remember when they were young, and he would take them on plane rides. You remember the touch and goes? Flying upside down? And I've been told that he even would turn off the propeller engine mid-flight. And then when the kids couldn't take it anymore, he turned it back on. Larry was a dedicated Hormel employee for almost 40 years. And unfortunately, he was a spam lover. And Larry was a dancer. Larry and Marilyn liked to go dancing. But he was also a fisherman. I was able to see that huge striper that he had mounted in his room last week. And I was pretty jealous. It was like 28 pound striper. It didn't even look real. But when we talk about fishing, it also brings fun memories of your Minnesota trips. When you would go up to Minnesota each summer and, and you would catch crappie and walleye and sunnies. Those are awesome memories. But that's when Larry would always say a famous line of his. There's a keeper. But last but not least, he was a Husker fan. Without exception, a big red football Saturday meant it was time for Larry to hang his big red flag into the opening of the door. It was so big, it was an actual barrier to those who wanted to come in and join in the fun of the big red football Saturday at the going house. Well, that's quite a list of things that Larry was, isn't it? But I forgot two important things. The first one is Larry was a sinner. A sinner just like you, a sinner just like me. But the last thing that Larry was was the most important. Larry was a believer. And because of the faith he had in his Lord and his Savior Jesus Christ, his sins are covered by Christ's robe of righteousness. Yes, the American flag 
that draped over Larry's coffin as, as he was brought into worship today, it symbolized something very important to Larry. He was a proud American. But the pall that is placed on his coffin now is so much more important. You see, a pall represents Larry being covered with the robe of Christ's righteousness. When God sees Larry today, he sees only the love of Jesus, the perfect Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. A beautiful Savior we just sang about him. You see, when God sees Larry, God sees a keeper, someone worth suffering and dying for. John 3, 16 and 17, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Larry is saved. He's a keeper. God is not throwing him back. There is nothing that separates Larry from the love of God which we're all reminded of this morning from the words of the Apostle Paul in our epistle. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This brings me back to the flag draping in the front door on Husker football Saturdays. I have a feeling not many people came through that barrier who weren't Husker fans. It indirectly sent a message, didn't it? Believe in the Huskers or you're not coming in. Little did Larry know that when he faithfully would put that flag up each morning on those Saturday mornings, that would help us this morning understand the love of Jesus. You see, because of sin, we are separated from God. But because of his amazing grace, his never-ending mercy, he has given us a new way to be with him again. That is his desire for all of us to be with him again. Today, Larry is with Jesus. There is nothing separating him from God's love. In God's eyes and in God's heart, Larry was a keeper. But God's desire is that we all know Jesus. That we all become keepers through faith in his son, and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And I have good news for you this morning. Through our baptisms and through the power of the Word, we can believe and we can all be saved. You can be a keeper. I can be a keeper. Just like Larry. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now, may the peace that passes all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue with our prayer. Let us pray to the Lord our God and Father who raised Jesus from the dead. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together into one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. We ask that you would give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and peace. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life, and so pass with him through the gate of death and the grave to our joyful resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. 
God, we ask that you would give to the family of Larry and to all who mourn comfort in their grief and assure confidence in your loving care that casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Give courage and faith to the, to the bereaved that within the communion of your church, they may have strength to meet the days ahead in the assurance of a holy and certain hope and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love who have departed in the faith. Lord, in your mercy. Help us, we pray, in the midst of things we cannot understand, to believe and find comfort in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy. Receive our thanks for Larry and for all the blessings you bestowed on him in this earthly life. Bring us at last to our heavenly home, that with him we may see you face to face in the joys of paradise. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God of all grace, who sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to bring life and immortality to light. We give you thanks that by his death he destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Strengthen us with the confidence that because he lives, we shall live also. And that neither death, nor life, nor things present, nor things to come, will be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me will live even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. Mine own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me will live even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Let us pray. Lord God, our shepherd, you gather the lambs of your flock into the arms of your mercy and bring them home. Comfort us with a certain hope of the resurrection to everlasting life and a joyful reunion with those who love, who we love, who have died in the faith. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Receive the benediction of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. And we conclude this morning our service with how great thou art. And the fourth verse is something to celebrate. When Jesus comes the second time with his joy and adoration, yes, then we will be home. As our, as our souls meet up once again with our new glorified bodies, and we truly will be home, and that is something to celebrate. We sing it. Thank you.
much uh, as we conclude this morning for some marvelous fellowship and some and some good Larry stories. And then um, the committal will be uh, in Lions, and um, we'll give you a little heads up when we're about ready to, to, to roll the Lions if you're going to follow us. And um, God bless your day. Let's say a little table prayer before, before we leave for lunch today. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest, and let these gifts to us be blessed. Amen. Thank you.